Hi there. In my first video, I gave five good reasons why you shouldn't tamper with the EGR system of your vehicle. Now this video has caused a bit of controversy, so in this second video, I'd like to go into a bit more depth and clarify a few points and myths. Now, if you want to know more about an EGR, what it is and how it works, check out the first video, see the link above. As a refresher, the five reasons to not delete the EGR were 1. It voids your new car warranty. 2. It is highly illegal. 3. It reduces engine power. 4. The result is higher EGTs or exhaust gas temperatures. And 5. Higher amount of NOx is produced. Now the first two points are crystal clear. However, I'd like to clarify the remaining three points. But in order to do so, I'll briefly cover diesel engines and Euro emission requirements over the last 15 years. So going back to Euro 3 and earlier diesel engines, they were typically running compression ratios of around 20 to 1 or even higher. And these engines were typically heavy to help cope with that large compression ratio. And they typically featured indirect mechanical injection fuel systems. And they may or may not have been turbocharged. Now with the introduction of Euro 4, which is what this engine is compliant with, the amount of NOx allowed to be emitted from the exhaust had to be halved. So from 0.5 grams per kilometre to 0.25 grams per kilometre. Additionally, the amount of particulate matter also had to be halved from 0.05 grams per kilometre to 0.025 grams per kilometre. In order to satisfy Euro 4 requirements, many manufacturers introduced EGR systems, direct injection and later common rail direct injection systems, lower compression ratios between 17 to 1 and 20 to 1, and higher pressure turbochargers. Now the EGR was one of the major components in reducing NOx. Simply, engineers realised that lowering combustion temperatures also lowered the amount of NOx produced, and this could be done by reducing the amount of fresh oxygen available for combustion, and displacing it with some cooled, recirculated exhaust gases. Now this also posed another problem for engineers. When combustion temperatures are lowered, more particulate matter is produced. It's like a seesaw with NOx and particulate matter. When you reduce NOx, more particulate matter is produced, and vice versa. So with Euro 4 and with all the technology advancements, engines were lighter, quieter, produced more power and torque, more fuel efficient, and they were cleaner than their Euro 3 predecessors. Now fast forward to Euro 5. The requirements in Euro 5 stated that NOx had to be reduced from 0.25 grams per kilometre to 0.18 grams per kilometre, a reduction of 28% and particulate matter had to go from 0.025 grams per kilometre down to 0.0045 grams per kilometre. That's about five and a half times less. So the big emphasis was on reducing particulate matter. In order to achieve this, manufacturers further lowered the compression ratios, so lower than 17 to 1. They increased the fuel injection pressure, increased the turbocharging pressure, and they utilised bigger EGR coolers. As well as that, they introduced a diesel particulate filter. Again, the result was lighter and quieter engines which produced more power and torque, more fuel efficient and cleaner than their Euro 4 predecessors. Now with this historical background, let's revisit the last three reasons, starting from number five. So on an EGR system, if it is blocked, it will produce more NOx. That's the whole point of the EGR system. And this is because more oxygen is available in the cylinder for combustion. So the result is high combustion temperatures and more powerful combustion. So naturally, this will also increase EGTs, or exhaust gas temperatures, reason number four. And some engines simply cannot cope with too high of EGTs for a prolonged period. Hence a reduction in engine longevity. Now going back to reason number three, the reduced engine power. This will only be true if in the EGR system, there is a flow sensor. If the EGR system is blocked and the sensor detects zero flow, it can cause the ECM to trigger a fault code and reduce engine power. It does this by limiting the amount of fuel available for combustion. So this will typically impact newer Euro 4 or Euro 5 engines. However, if there is no EGR flow sensor, then the ECM won't know any different that there is no EGR flow. So the result then would be an increase in power produced by the engine, and consequently maybe better fuel efficiency. So it all really depends on whether the ECM is detecting EGR flow as to whether the engine will produce more or less power. 
I hope this clarifies the five reasons on why you shouldn't tamper or block your vehicle's EGR system. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and like this video. Thanks for watching.